Hello people, today I'm here with a wonderful guy that I met in 2017. I was working in Dominican Republic for AFS, the NGO. I was a chairman for three years and a half and he was like my tour guide, my host for me and for my wife and we built a friendship since then and today I brought him to the channel so you could meet this wonderful person. He lives in Florida now and he's my friend George. How are you today? Hello, I'm John, Rod's friend. Please subscribe to his channel, Rod the Brazilian English Teacher on YouTube right now for a lot of free content. As he says, thank you, see you. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, Rodrigo. Um, indeed, I met you uh, in 2017. It was a long time ago. Yeah, so um, I decided to move from the Dominican Republic since, you know, like economics, the, the situation over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of awkward right now. Mm -hmm. Usually in Latino places, it's almost all the same. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mm -hmm. am here. I married my wife. Well, you, you know her. You know, she was my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been you know we've been working on it. we're working on it yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how was it for you to move out from dominican republic to the united states a major difference how was it well um you know when whenever you travel you usually we usually dominicans we usually travel from dominica from dominican republic to united states mm -hmm. so it's basically something usual you know the life already mm -hmm. you 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 are uh you know your surroundings and you know how it's gonna be it's like a it's like a machine that you enter a key and it just go and flows with the with the with, with the all the machines parts you know like with all the pieces together mm -hmm. so usa is a forward country it doesn't go back uh, it only goes forward so whenever you reach united states everything is organized everything is like planned you come over here, you always come uh, into a mall, you know, it's not the same thing as coming in mm -hmm. to work in the U.S. <clears throat> mm -hmm. At first, it was really, 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 really hard. I couldn't get any jobs in the Dominican Republic at the time that mm -hmm. it was on um, 2019. That's mm -hmm. when I realized that I shouldn't be anymore trying to work in my home mm -hmm. country because it was um, the, the job. They're really low. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh works over there they work uh they work like you know like having um somebody that could um take you into the job like you know like a contact or a, a little person that he's a superior guy it's all ranked in the u.s you're just a single person mm -hmm. and nobody is uh higher than another one you only have a supervisor and a manager that's all got you so mm -hmm. so it was hard it was hard yes i first moving on Chicago because I was living with my aunt in a first floor. She had a townhouse. So mm -hmm. it was like a two, three, uh, it was actually three floors house. Mm -hmm. And we decided to move with her because um, she was willing to rent us at a really low price. Um, I moved first. A month later, my wife came. Mm -hmm. um, we, decided, we decided to marry over here too. Um, and it was, it was, not a big wedding but you know it was mm -hmm. something good for us uh my mom planted it my mom helped me a lot she mm -hmm. was paying the rent at the moment too she helped me a lot um mm -hmm. and uh actually going into a another country like us um it's kind of you get impacted because you do whatever you, whatever you do in your home country though but the only thing is that there's no, not a lot of friends mm -hmm. since you're not, you're not living here since you were, you were a kid, a kiddo. Yeah. So that's, that's the only thing that I mm -hmm. sense that is not the same. Mm -hmm. Also the organization and everything else that mm -hmm. I just told you, but yeah. not having friends in, as, as in your home country is, mm -hmm. it could be really hard sometimes. Like you don't go out that much. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I work remotely as of right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, uh, it's not the same thing as Dominican Republic, where it's people with a lot of joy. You get a lot of friends to come with. 
Mm-hmm. It's more as a, it's more of a so so more controlled country. So not a lot of potting in that in that site, but people do it as normal. Because mm-hmm. I, I I I've seen a lot of people talking about the U.S. Mm-hmm. that it's they they only work. No, mm-hmm. you are, actually you do the same thing as Americans. You mm-hmm. work eight hours. Everybody works eight hours, like from mm-hmm. eight to five. What's the difference? Different is that you don't have childhood friends as you do in Brazil or Dominican Republic or any other. I totally get you because you moved out from Dominican Republic to the United <coughs> States. But before all of this, you traveled to Brazil as an exchange student. How yes. can you compare uh, being an exchange student and leaving Dominican Republic and then leaving Dominican Republic to live in the United States as a married man? You can't compare it. Um, it's something like I was a kid when my mom bring me the first time to Disney, I guess. Mm. I, I didn't even remember because I think I was like six years old. Yeah. And English is a language that you speak mm-hmm. since you're a kid. It's an mm-hmm. international language in the Dominican Republic that is a tourist country. But you have to learn it. When you go to Brazil, when I went to Brazil, in this case, I didn't learn. I, I, didn't, I didn't know a single word of, of Portuguese. I only knew, you know, like stuff like obrigado, which means thank you. And something like that, like some, some little stuff, but to go and, and not, that's not even nothing because language is mm-hmm. only a little barrier. But when you get there and you meet a new family that you don't know what's happening, you don't know how to communicate with them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little crashing, I guess. Uh, that's the word. It's a little impressive because you're like, wow, I don't know these people at all. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, like being so receptive to me and everything. I'm, I'm blessed that I had a good country. Mm-hmm. A really, really. Uh, sorry, not, not a good country, a, a good family. And uh, my mom, she was the best. Um, I had a brother, too, when I first came into Brazil. Mm-hmm. And uh, all these buses that you, have to, that you have to take and everything to get whatever uh, the place they, they put you in. Um, it's, it's not the same, like... Mm-hmm. Brazil was more and more impacting than mm-hmm. than U.S. in like a whole different level. Because when you come to, to the U.S., I mean, you you're you used to it already. You mm-hmm. you used to the used to the people. People, it's more, you know, you don't have you don't have to be scared that you're gonna be I don't know like an attack on the streets or 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 any mm-hmm. robbery. Mm-hmm. That's not the, that's not how it works in the in, mm-hmm. in the U.S. When they when they do rob, they they rob big. You know, like <laughs> they don't do it like only to you. They do it like a whole bang, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, moving from Dominican to, to Brazil was was uh, was a very hard, uh, not an expected level. Of, uh, you know, like you're, you're totally unknown over there. You just jump in and there you go. In the U.S., you knew what was coming. You knew that work was coming. You knew that you had to buy your own stuff, you knew that you have to, you know, um, you, you, you knew it, you knew the guide already. But in Brazil, I'd never been to, I had never, I, I've, you know, never, I've, not even since I was a kid or mm-hmm. any family or any friends at all. Mm-hmm. And you only know what you heard of in the news. You don't get that. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get that guy. And you travel miles and miles away to yeah. meet yourself. We're gonna meet George, not George's dad, George's mom. We don't know yeah. your background, so you have to make a name for yourself. What do you miss most from Brazil after all these years? One of the things that I that I really miss is the gastronomy, of course. I'm always a foodie. I'm a foodie guy, and also the people, mm-hmm. the friends, the mm-hmm. the charismatic way of, mm-hmm. of seeing things that things are gonna get better tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I miss that. I miss my friends. I miss my family. How the people get in touch with the music. It's amazing. In mm-hmm. Brazil, it's it's something that's like very cultural to hear like, you know, music and family and mm-hmm. kind of dance together. I do that over here. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Yeah. It's not the same connection with music. Barbecues and everything else, you know, like gastronomy overall, but, it, you know, like joining mm-hmm. with people. Uh, maybe singing in a bar or uh, getting some beers with my mm-hmm. with my uncle. I I I was a very family family uh, family guy mm-hmm. at the moment. Mm-hmm. I had some low and high moments, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I miss yeah. I miss I miss that. What is it you do now? What is your occupation? When I came in at Chicago, I was working in a 
uh, uni- a soccer uniform uh, store mm-hmm. where I was selling and doing the marketing manager, everything. I was everything on it. Mm-hmm. Then I, le- I left Chicago and came to Florida because we realized that um, my uncle was over here. I had another uh, one of my mm-hmm. cousins, my brother cousin, mm-hmm. is um, one of the most um, united people to me. And then we decided to come over here since it was like two hours only from the Dominican Republic, which mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. great. I mean, if somebody dies or whatever happens, you should mm-hmm. just get in an airport mm-hmm. 20 minutes and you go fly there one hour and 50 mm-hmm. minutes, you're over there already. And they're, yeah. they're really cheap, the flights. After I came to Florida, I had a company that I was uh, do, uh, doing dog care, like pet sitting. Actually, right now I have a, I have a pet uh, that I'm taking care of. Uh, mm-hmm. We love dogs in my house. We love animals. I'm currently working for Microsoft as a vendor. I'm an outsourcing staff. I do... Mm-hmm. Um, I'm part of the of a group called CSD, mm-hmm. Human Resources Desk, mm-hmm. Help Desk, which is a uh, which is basically human resources. We manage uh, remotely. We manage um, the database of Microsoft, which is called HeadTrax, mm-hmm. and we you know we we modify people, you know, um, add new people to the system and mm-hmm. uh, terminate them when they when they ever whenever the contracts ends or everything. Yeah. Like How did you deal with being away from home, the pandemic? Probably you couldn't travel to the Dominican Republic. How no, was nothing. that for you? The worst part of, of, mm-hmm. of COVID, actually all my clients, I didn't have at uh, that time, all began in March, end of March and beginning of April, 2020. Yeah. 2020. At that time, I was already on Florida. I was working with my dogs and everything, you know, making mm-hmm. a little bit of money here and there. I, I also did a Amazon. We, we did something called Amazon Flex over here, which mm-hmm. is uh, basically picking up uh, food for people and uh, delivering them at their house. Mm-hmm. Um, I was jobless, basically. Mm-hmm. Nothing came. We had to quarantine for like two months. I had to even uh, call a Brazilian guy who was my barber and he mm-hmm. was coming into my house. That's, that was the only way that I could make my, make my bird or make my hair it was really bad my mom helped me i i am blessed that i have a mom that she's away and beyond you know yeah. her i think yeah it, no I no her. i didn't meet her but whenever you come because because i we're waiting for you in the meeting but you know that you owe me that <laughs> the, the covid was really impacting for us i'm blessed that my wife was having a job at that moment too i think that she was working as a cashier and in, in the store they paid her a little bit not that much because because they send everybody to their house basically mm-hmm. everything closed everything was like wow you know like we gotta gonna discover what's happening all the masks going on it was really hard it was really hard two months really hard then everything you know slowly slowly pace begin to open i got accepted in a delivery um Mm -hmm. company which which is called ship it's a basically a company an app that you Mm -hmm. uh, order Mm -hmm. your food from the grocery Mm -hmm. store and you go Mm -hmm. there on delivery pick up the the stuff you you basically do the do the groceries for people Mm -hmm. and you deliver them so Mm -hmm. At that time, I was okay. We moved mm-hmm. from from the part that we were in Florida to another part, mm-hmm. and uh, we moved again. I mean, like mm-hmm. two months, and now mm-hmm. uh, we're over here at this part of uh, my own apartment, my own stuff. Because uh, we were having, you know, a family conflict here and there. COVID was really hard. I was living with my cousin and her boyfriend in in my house in mm-hmm. the, the apartment that I lived. In. And most of the people who know me from the channel knew me as an English teacher, and yes. you knew me as a person. What did you learn from me and my wife? Because you met both of us, we spent like, a, what could you tell people? How did I manage things? What did you think of us? Look, Rodrigo, um, I've always think of you as a strong guy, strong people that has a, a lot of um, a lot of energy, a positive energy. Mm-hmm. You, your wife was so sweet. I learned from you guys that even if you have like things that could stop you you should jump them and you just move forward from your obstacle basically you're not only a brazilian you're a, a worldwide citizen you know you open to me and i was received with so much positive energy and so much flow that it all went good the few moments in the, the i think it was a day or two that we mm. met it was amazing you, you guys were were uh, really um you really teach me i really felt that connection friendship overflowing and you all over the years you were always confident with me and always you know, we we still communicate till, till today we never oh, yes. lose touch yeah yeah that's the most important now we're gonna go to the rapid round game First one, my life in the States is... Peaceful. My wife is... Organized. My family is... Happy. 
happiness, like a lot of joy. After COVID is over, I'm traveling to Japan. My best memory about Brazil is Guarana. <laughs> Now you ask me questions, all right? The thing that you most liked in the Dominican Republic was? The warmth of the people. When you can get out of your country, what country would you decide to go? I don't know. There are places that I want to go. I want to <laughs> go to... I don't even know where I'm going. I want to go to the UK to visit a very dear friend of mine. I want to go see many people. I want to go to New York. And certainly, I'm going to tell you where I am and you're going to yeah, meet up with definitely. me again. Definitely. What do you most miss right now? Hello. I'm John, Rod's friend. Please subscribe to his channel, Rod the Brazilian English Teacher on YouTube right now for a lot of free content. As he says, thank you, see you. Traveling, and I miss my friends as well. Seeing my friends, talking to them. How can you describe yourself? That's a good one. Well, someone who is down to earth, who tries to help as much as I can. I try to be humble most of the time. If I can't help, I don't disturb. But if yeah. I can help, I do my best. I try to see the good side on everything. I don't like those kind of people who want to get things without really deserving. Like, I want to do this, but you don't do anything to help to yourself it. to get what yeah. you want. You know, that's yeah. the way I feel. If you want to do something, go for it. Everybody has good qualities and bad qualities. And what was your favorite meal at Dominican? I think it was when you took me to eat empanadas at that uh, food truck. I can't forget that day because I had, it was like a hot dog inside the empanada. You remember oh, yeah, that? Yeah. It was a hamburger. Inside yeah, yeah, the yeah. It was a hamburger, not a hot dog. Yes, that was delicious. And I, I craved that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that in Brazil. And also that, um, was that Thai ice cream? The Thai ice cream, yes. We are getting to the end, unfortunately. I met you four years ago. We clicked from okay. the very first moment. And I told you when I said goodbye to oh, yeah. you, I don't know when we're going to meet again. But I'm sure we are friends from now on. And whatever you need me, I'm going to be here for you. Since then, of course, we don't talk every day. We are friends and this friendship grows. I wish you all the best. And I want you to know that it was a real pleasure to have met you and that our paths <laughs> crossed and everything else. Yes. And whenever you come to Brazil, you have to come to my town to visit me. It's oh, always well. a pleasure to talk to you. And it seems to me that I came back for years. We just uh, picked up where we left off. And yes. for me, that's amazing, you know. Thank you for your time, for you being always so kind and generous. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And oh, I hope well. to see you very soon. Me too, Rodrigo. Thank you, everybody. I hope you liked it. This was George, my friend from Dominican Republic, who lives in Florida now. And see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.